Ooh. All right, round two. Guys, I've made two massive mistakes. Number one, I'm using my jacket to balance the table so that the table doesn't rock, so that that's steady. So now I'm cold. Uh, mistake number two is I'm not doing any favors for my back. Um, doing this, not going to help my posture down the line. Number three, I am upset that I picked Rolling Realms for this video specifically because now my reference sweet potato is not really relevant any longer. Um, the dimensions just, it's about as, as deep or as thick as the, as the reference sweet potato. But the dimensions for Koo just work so well and this just, I don't need the reference sweet potato anymore, unfortunately, which I liked it. Um, so I'm going to have the reference little mic cover, which has an actual name, which I don't remember. But um, yeah, I'm just going to, this is going to be my timestamp stuff. But mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. In the continuing series of games I got, today's episode is brought to you by Sleep Deprivation. And Stone Mario, it, it, I, I don't think I can actually even say that. Or I, I could, but as a joke. Stone Mario Games is not presenting this. This is just by Stone Mario Games. Um, I said, um, I need to work on that. I need to be better. But let's jump into this. So, timestamp. What is it? This is Rolling Realms. This is a roll and write from Stonemaier Games, designed by Jamie Stegmaier, who is the head of Stonemaier Games. And this is a unique game, specifically because it is a roll and write where all of the different realms in which you are rolling and solving puzzles and strategically trying to get points, all of them are based off of other Stonemaier Games products, the other titles in the catalog. So it's very self-referential, which at first, at first you would think, ah, that is a crappy cash grab to just promote the other games in the Stonemaier Games catalog. Like why, why would you do that? Um, I mean, obviously we know why you would do that, but why did you do that? However, that's not it at all. Um, this is not... This is a good game. I enjoy this. It is, I honestly... I think I might like it more solo than competitive. Specifically because of the mini golf solo Automa system that, that was created. But it is also a very easy, very satisfying game to play with other people. The unique thing about it, or the thing about it that maybe is somewhat my least favorite, and why I play it solo, I get so distracted. <laughs> I get so distracted in these videos. I can't, I don't think I can even blame it on lack of sleep. I think it's just, I'm a distractible person, and I, I don't have my, I don't have my outline in front of me, which means I'm not being organized. So let me, let me double back or triple back, or quadruple back, to the actual point of this timestamp section, which is, what is it? So it's a roll and write game, based off of all of the realms or worlds that have been presented, established within Stonemaier Games. So, Viticulture, Tapestry, Euphoria, Scythe, My Little Scythe, so many others, Charterstone, Red Rising. Oh, there's more of them. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can remember all of them without having to look it up. Between Two Castles. That's nine. I think there's 11 or 13. I'm getting close. I'm getting close. I can't remember them. I don't want you to have to stay here all day. Pendulum. I should have remembered that. And Wingspan. How did I forget Wingspan? Wingspan and Pendulum. So, I personally own... Tapestry, Scythe, Euphoria, Between Two Castles, 
and Red Rising. I own six of these. I have... Oh, did I say Pendulum? I, I've personally gotten rid of My Little Scythe. And I've played but don't love Wingspan. And I have played and thought it was okay, Viticulture. And I've never played Between Two Cities. That's the only one that I'm not really familiar with that is on here that I don't think I actually named. I said Between Two Castles. I have not done Between Two Cities. So I've played a lot of Stonemeyer games, specifically for review. He, Jamie is a very generous donator or you know patron of the you know reviewing content creator industry and is very good to both small reviewers and large reviewers i have been my whole life a small reviewer and i started off writing on game tyrant and i did that for you know maybe two years a year and a half maybe two years and then i you know shifted to doing the website for jesse and in that entire time from game tyrant to the blog for jesse on quacklobe.com on all of that, I have done games for Stonemaier games. I've, I've reviewed them. And so I have a lot of familiarity with this world, which makes this make more sense. And once again, I have spiraled away on a tangential discussion, other than actually telling you the synopsis of this game. But it's okay. It's okay. What you do is you get three realm cards across three rounds. So there's three rounds. You get three round cards per round. And in that time, you have nine rolls of the dice of you or other people in order to roll and assign the number of those dice to those particular realm cards. Each realm card has a specific... Let me see if I can get them. That's just the... Each realm card has a specific puzzle on it and specific rules for how you assign dice to them. And each card allows you to accrue resources, which are used to do special moves and give you extra dice. But they also have ways for which you to earn stars. And stars are the point of the game. That's what you want. You want to get a lot of stars. You want to win stars and have the most stars at the end of the game. At the end of nine rolls, a round is complete and you have filled out those three realms as much as you are going to. And then after that, you draw three more realms and do it again. So you do this process three times, three rounds of three realms with nine rolls each round. I think I said that right. And Jamie designed this when the pandemic was going, when nobody was allowed to play together. So we were all isolated, and this is an easy game that can be scaled almost to infinity and beyond. Specifically because, I think I said, is that, is that one of those, as someone who listens to what other people say a lot, and who writes a lot, I'm always interested in phrases that, that certain people repeat all of the time. Um, like Alex, for example, Alex will say, this is a game. Such and such is a game, is a game, is a game. And when he's describing what it is. So he'll do that. Jesse has a couple that he does as well. He says, intrigued or shines. He, he has certain adjectives that are recurring for him. And so I'm wondering what mine are. What, what are mine that I sub, subconsciously or not really realizing at sale time? I think I said specifically because like three times in this video already. However, the focus of what I was saying pertains to... Yeah, it's infinitely scalable. In the sense that you only need one person rolling the dice and everybody else just needs a set of these cards. That, that's the only interaction that really exists between the players is everybody's using the same roll of the dice. Which is why I think I prefer this solo, because I, I don't feel the need to play a game in isolation from other people with very limited shared experience, which in this case is just the roll of the dice. But I fully understand the value of it in a pandemic world when you just want to connect with people and maybe you're talking over that the whole time, which you're able to do in this game once you kind of learn the puzzle of each place and you're not focused on crunching the numbers as to where the best placement is of the dice value. That was probably the absolute longest what is it section 
in this whole series. Timestamp. So I'm just going to keep this on my finger. And so is another one that I use a lot, but that's like filler words. Filler words to me don't count. So, like, um, and uh, all things I need to work on while I'm talking. Honestly, if you just pause, take a breath and think for a moment, you don't necessarily need those words as long as you can find the right thread in the conversation. Why I have it. I have this because I asked for a review copy of it or I signed up for a review copy of it because Jamie is a generous person and he does a lot to be good to the community in the board game world from my perspective. Um, and yeah, I, I wanted to try it out. I usually try every game of his or of Stone Myers that I haven't touched yet. If it's a new game or if it's an old one that I haven't experienced, I'm always willing to go back and check it out. That's actually why I went back and reviewed and played Euphoria substantially late versus when it actually was released because I had the opportunity to do so. And I actually like Euphoria a lot. That's I'll talk about that game when I get to that game in the series, but I like Euphoria quite a bit. That's why I have it. When did I get it? Timestamp, when did I get it? I got Rolling Realms very recently, within the last four months. I think I got it ahead of... No, I, I don't actually... I don't know. So I, got, I have the first printing, but I'm not sure if I got it ahead of pre-orders or alongside the first wave of pre-orders. But I do have, in the first... 22,000, I have, in the first 1,200, I have printing 1193. So I, I've, I've gotten it within the last six months for sure. Within the last four months probably, but time doesn't make sense to me anymore ever since the pandemic started. So it could have been 14 years and I wouldn't know. But that's when I got it. What do I like about it? Timestamp. What do I like about it? I, I like solo play a lot. I, I really enjoy the solo play, the solitaire experience in Rolling Realms. Specifically, <laughs> I almost said specifically because, which is not what I want to say right now because I don't want to fall into that trap. Past Devin set that trap up for me. I like the solo play for what it brings to the challenge of the core gameplay. The core gameplay, as I mentioned previously, is three rounds with three realms with nine dice. But the mini golf experience adds a you know deviation from that norm for each of the 18 holes or whatever in the mini golf. Maybe you have two less rolls to complete it. Maybe you can only assign, assign certain values in certain realms. There is some permutation of the base gameplay that elevates the tension and makes it harder to achieve and makes you want to go back and try again. And I think that is why this will be something that I keep in my collection for longer than I might have otherwise. This is probably the kind of game that I would enjoy for a while and then either give away to a friend or a family member or seller trade. But I think I'll keep this for longer than I would have otherwise because of the solo play. What I like about it. This is still what I like about it, isn't it? My goodness, guys. This is going to be an interesting couple weeks or couple months. What I like about it. I, I like the... You know, I, I originally gave it a little bit of you know, doubt because of its connection to the other Stonemire games, but I like a lot of the other titles from Stonemires, which means that this actually had more value to me because of that. I was invested in several of these worlds, so seeing them crop up again in this iteration or in this experience was nice. I had a familiarity to some of the aspects of it, and I was able to identify the themes and the mechanics that each of the realms were using that reflected what happens in those games. 
And I liked that a lot. That was fun. That was exciting to see how a designer and how a publisher looks back on their previous titles and distills some element or spirit of it into a small roll and write presentation or representation. So that's what I, I like that about that. That and the solo play are probably the two biggest thumbs up from me. Will it leave? Timestamp. Will it leave? As I mentioned, it would have left earlier than it, I expected it to until I played the solo. I'm really glad I jumped into the miniature golf solo play because of what it elevates to me, what it brings into the experience. I, I, think I'll, I think I will keep this until I have played through the mini golf quite a bit and then I will probably get rid of it because after that I won't feel the need for it and there are other games that I would rather play at you know four, five, six players than this. But I have enjoyed it and I will want to continue to enjoy it solo and then after that we'll see and it will probably leave. Would you like it? Timestamp. It depends. It depends. There are. I have started to enjoy rolling rights or blank and rights, flipping rights, whatever you want to call them, whatever they are in terms of the style of blank and right. I have started to enjoy them. I've played Hadrian's Wall recently with Alex, and I liked that quite a bit. I want to buy that one. That one was exciting, and it has a thick thick selection of sheets so you can play a lot of games before you run out of those and then I think after that you can print off more but I liked that one a lot that felt chunky and exciting and is another one that that one I almost would want to play that one's unique but that, that's not this game so I need to I need to focus would you like it it depends on whether you like these these style games. If you if you like rolling rights, flipping rights, that that genre, then you will probably find something to like here. Also, if you are a fan of Stone Meyer games, you would probably enjoy this because it references a lot of the titles that you already have a fondness for. Oh, I think that that thing that's about said. I think this one is somewhat clear as to whether you would like it or not based off of your preference for the company that all of these games are housed within and based off your expectations or appreciation for the genre of role and rights. Rating. Timestamp. This is probably a 7 out of 10 for me. And I would say explicitly 7 out of 10 solo. Maybe seven and a half, actually. This one's unique. I think this is maybe a seven and a half solo for me, and like a six and a half multiplayer. This this is not one I would pick competitively. It's not one I would pick to play with several people around the table because you kind of get invested in the the visual puzzle and the spatial allocation of the dice. You get a little more focused on that, maybe less so the more you play, but especially if you're bringing in new people, which this is a kind of game where you could bring in new people because it's relatively light in terms of application. It's just a little bit heavier in terms of the nuances and recognizing when and where to apply dice values. But yeah, it would, it would be probably about a six and a half for me competitively with other people. I, solo, I think it's a, maybe a seven and a half. I, I, think it's, I think it's a decent jump for me playing this solo versus competitive. I gave it the rating and now I have to give it a thumbnail. Um, I, think I'll, I think I'll get rid of my thumbnail, guys. So, timestamp. Now I'm gonna put that over there. I'm gonna get something from the game. Because I, I liked that when I did that the other time. I'm going to get these chunky dice. I'm going to send that this way. I'm going to go <laughs> rolling realms.
Boom. That's all I need for this one. That's all she wrote. That's all she wrote, folks. That's it. Loud noises. Loud noises. I think that's everything. I'm good. Boom. We're done.